everyone, this is Janelle O'Clue of Lojo Immigration, where we provide you with confidence and clarity with immigration. Okay, so today's video is an update on um, our prior video that we did on USCIS's new policy uh, where uh, USCIS officers uh, are no longer required to issue a RFE, that's Request for Evidence, or a NOID, Notice of Intent to Deny, before actually denying a case, okay? So uh, we know that a lot of you uh, watched the video. We also got a lot of questions and comments. Um, and so I wanted to do this follow-up video to just provide you with a little bit more clarity on the issue. Also, USCIS has come out uh, with um, some uh, clarifications um, because they also got a, a lot of uh, questions. So I just want to share uh, that updated information with you. Okay, first, uh, the most popular uh, question uh, that we got here at Lojo Immigration was pe uh, a lot of people were worried, oh no, I already filed my immigration application or petition. Does this mean that USCIS is going to just deny it outright without issuing the RFE or the uh, NOID, N-O-I-D. Um, and to clarify, USCIS has said that that new policy goes into effect on September 11th, 2018. And they have made it clear that it only affects cases that are filed on or after September 11th, 2018. Okay, so if you have your immigration filing, that's either the, the, the petition or the application that reached immigration prior to September 11th, 2018, then it is not going to be governed by this new policy. Okay, so if you have your application or petition that was filed with immigration before, then it will be governed by the prior policy memo, which was from 2013. And the prior policy memo said that um, adjudicators are required to issue a request for evidence, RFE, or a notice of intent to deny, NOID, NOID, if there is insufficient evidence with the case, okay? So just to clarify, if you already had your case pending with immigration before September 11, 2018, it will be governed by the prior policy and you can expect to receive an RFE or an NOID moving forward. However, if you submit your uh, petition or your application after on, sorry, on or after September 11, 2018, then uh, the adjudicator um, can deny the case without first issuing an RFE or a NOID, okay? Hope that's clear on the timelines, all right? Another question that uh, we've been receiving from people is, well, how do they determine uh, which case gets you know, denied outright with no RFE or NOID? Okay, so uh, once again, this is further clarification that USCIS has provided. What they've said is that this new policy is not meant to, quote, penalize innocent mistakes with filing. Okay, it's not meant to penalize innocent mistakes with filing. And so uh, they gave the example that, uh, you know, you, you, you had some multi-page document or something and maybe like a few pages were missing, like, you know, sometimes paper gets left in the copier or something like that, you know, innocent mistake. So you shouldn't be penalized for an innocent mistake. Those type of innocent mistakes, they're still going to issue the request for evidence, asking you to provide the, um, uh, the necessary evidence, okay? What they've said is that this new policy is meant to discourage, quote, placeholder filings or frivolous filings, okay? Now, they gave the example of uh, the type of cases where there's just going to be an outright denial, no request for evidence, or a NOID, no RFE or NOID. Uh, they said uh, cases uh, where it warrants statutory denial. 
okay? And the example that you gave is when there is no legal basis for the benefit. So for example, if you are trying to uh, file an immigrant petition for some family member where there's no legal basis for that type of a case, okay? So, uh, you know, like say you're trying to sponsor your cousin, okay, or a grandparent, something where there is no legal basis for sponsorship. Um, also, uh, if you are trying to file a waiver and there is no qualifying family member for the waiver, okay, that's going to be an outright denial. But the more tricky one, the more tricky one is when they said that, you know, outright denials for, quote, lack of initial evidence. So then you're like, well, you know, how exactly are they going to tell if something is lack of initial evidence or if, uh, you know, it was an innocent mistake and you didn't include the evidence? I'm, I'm not really sure how they're going to figure that one out. Uh, but uh, basically, like, for example, say you're doing a family-based adjustment of status, okay, family-based adjustment of status, and you do not include the um, I-864 affidavit of support. That's going to be an outright uh, denial. Okay. Um, also, uh, you know, if you submit a waiver application and you don't put in any supporting evidence uh, showing the hardship, that's also going to be an outright denial. Another example they gave is, you know, an employer who is sponsoring someone for an H-1B, but they don't put in any evidence of the beneficiary's education or experience. That's going to be an outright denial. So these are examples that USCIS has, has given, but, you know, obviously we're going to see how this policy plays out moving uh, forward. Uh, uh, during uh, the Q&A, the question and answer session with USCIS, they did, uh, though someone asked a question about, oh, what about uh, the medicals? Is it still okay to submit, um, you know, an, an, uh, uh, the, the adjustment of status 485 uh, without the medical? And at least the answer they gave, um, uh, you know, was yes, it is still okay to submit the 485 and do the uh, medical later. Okay, so uh, one thing that USCIS did say is that uh, when the new policy goes into effect on September 11th, that they are going to be providing the public with uh, checklists, okay, um, on uh, their website. So hopefully those checklists to be able to give people a little bit more guidance on what uh, type of initial evidence is required. So uh, definitely be on the lookout for those checklists and, um, you know, if you really want to be uh, safe, obviously the best thing to do is to get experienced, qualified legal counsel <laughs> to represent you. You know, someone who knows the law, knows what the statutory requirements are, knows what the evidentiary requirements are, and can help you to uh, put forth a strong case from the very beginning. Okay? All right, folks, so I hope this video helps to provide you with a little bit more clarity and also confidence with your immigration matter. So as always, uh, thanks for tuning in. If you found the video to be helpful, give it a thumbs up. Also, click to subscribe to Lojo Immigration so you can continue to see uh, more immigration updates. Okay? Thanks for watching. Bye.